Welcome to the Bill and Franz show in France. I'm Bill. We have an excellent show for you today. Today's guest is Linda Dissler, and she's going to be speaking to us about cancer because she is a cancer coach. And we'll get into what a cancer coach is too, plus hot topics. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bill and Fry Show. Yeah. Okay, our guest today is Linda Ditzler. She is a cancer coach. She's going to tell us all about what she's doing today. Okay, okay well, um, tell us, what is, a, what is a cancer coach? Well, a cancer coach um, is a person, me, that helps individuals um, in their cancer journey. So I help with um, recovery. I help with um, educating them about their, about their cancer. And I give them all the tools they need necessary to increase their longevity, their survival rate, and just you know, bring a quick healing to their body. What would be some of those tools? Well, um, what I do, if you don't mind, I'll just explain how the, how the protocol works. Absolutely. Because most, most, most people I use a protocol with. And I, I, it's, it's the best thing if I can have, when I take on a client who has not started anything yet. Um, because I can educate them on how to go about finding not only their doctor, but the but the best chemo if they're going to have chemo, mm -hmm. the type that will be individualized for their cancer. Because typically cancers are uh, treated statistically or by a kind of a flow sheet that, that that doctors use, and also sometimes you know sometimes doctors are not able to do that because of their their practice is so busy. So I do work with doctors and. Um, we share information, and so that's that's really great. But on the protocol, um, I work with a client for six weeks, and each week three hours a week. Sometimes I'll reverse that. The total is 18 hours, and I educate them all the way through um, therapies and treatments, and how and building a team of support around themselves, um, which is very holistic, and all the way through um, nutritional lifestyle changes, risk factors that may have. Um, brought them to that place and so how to eliminate those in the course of their their healing and they make some big lifestyle changes um, and that goes all the way through to um, even a spiritual dimension of encouragement and, and of empowering so it really helps them take control back of their life because once someone gets that diagnosis of cancer um, they, they their world just tends to go out of control you so like you're almost like a therapist well more like a coach okay. because um how would you distinguish those two well a therapist is more someone um listening and 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 taking your what you're saying and, and trying and putting it back to you so that you can start to kind of come up with your own solutions okay. whereas opposed to a coach you have a lot of solutions that you might want to see which one fits with that client and you educate them and then and then, like a personal trainer, in a way, okay. you give them you give them modalities, you give them exercises, you give them all these things to work with, and then you you help them fit the one that fits for them, and then you treat, keep them on track. You're like kind of their cheerleader, you know. You're helping them cross that finish line, you know, like that. So um, it's a different relationship. But I, that sounds really good because I think a lot of people would need that. Like I said, I I don't have the personal experience of saying I have cancer. But I know people who do have it, and it devastates their lives when they first find out. So it, it, it definitely seems necessary to have somebody who can coach you through the process of what you're going to go through. That's Absolutely, cool. there it is an established fact that people who have a cancer coach working with them, they do heal faster, they recover, their their lives are longer because of it. I and it. it's 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 just a um, a cre incredible thing to do. You know, that reminds me of a study I saw on TV about prayer. They said people who pray tend to get better or whatever, have some type of beliefs. Um, and with the cancer coach, that sounds almost like some the same thing in a way where you, you're really helping people who need this type of attention. It obviously seems that we need cancer coaches. It actually is new. Um, 
it's a relatively new organization. It's through the National Association of Professional Cancer Coaches, okay. which is actually um, the main office is in Toronto. There's quite a number of cancer coaches in Canada, um, um, some in Europe and some other um, remote places. But there are there are relatively few in the United States. I am currently the only one in the Midwest. How can people reach you? Well, I have a website. Um, it's called mycancerhelp.com. It's all all one word, of course. And um, that's that's probably the best way to mm -hmm. get a hold of me. And my phone number's there, um, address, and my emails. Okay. Well, as y'all see out there, hey, this is a very important job to do, and. Linda is the only qualified cancer coach in the Midwest, so hey, this is one of those career things where Mitt Romney or Obama need to jump on. We need to get some money for this, <laughs> for some more funding. Not, not just medical help, but that mental help. We're going to take a little break and we'll be right back, okay? I'm actually, you know that Saturday Night Live video? I'm on a boat! Yeah, yeah. I'm on the coast. Yo, I'm on a beach, yo. I'm at a motel. I'm under a flagpole. I'm in a province. I'm in danger. I'm dangerous. Yo, I'm at a lighthouse, yo. I'm on a dock. I'll go. Roosevelt's deck. I'm on a deck. Roosevelt's deck. I'm on the beach. I'm on a pier. I'm with a lobster. I'm in a boat. By yours. I don't even need to be here. All right. Man. Say when. I'm in a boat. Oh, Okay, welcome back to the Bill and Fran show. We're gonna put our sunglasses on now for the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> What's on your mind, Franz? Well, I guess we're transforming into. We are. We, we're cool. We can really cool now. Okay. I feel much better. <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna jump off into hot topics, and we're just gonna speak about 2012 in the broad aspect. Because this year we have a major election coming up. Then we have the Mayan calendar coming up where at the end of this year, the world's going to end. So I guess it really doesn't matter what the election <laughs> exactly <laughs> results are. I think, I think the election results are going to cause the end of the world, actually. Cause the end wow. of the world. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. So what do you think about this year, then? <laughs> well, I have a great expectancy, actually, for this event. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think it's the end of an era and the beginning of something new. Um, I think there's a great awakening type of a renaissance thing. People are coming back to their roots and, and tired of what's been happening, you know. And I, something's, uh, you know, something's on the move. Yes. So um, I'm, I'm not the eternal optimist, but I'm optimistic. Okay, okay, okay. The what do you think? About the election? No, about the whole year. The man. whole Everything year. Is going on, I mean. Well, I must say, you know, last year was a turbulent, complex mixture of good and bad. I'm expecting the same for this year. I'm expecting that summer is going to be very, very warm. Okay. And um, I, as far as the race, I'm kind of looking forward to it from a spectator's perspective. I think it's going to be entertaining to see uh, the the the, um, the difference between the two major candidates is striking in many ways, and in other ways they they have some similarities. Yes. Um, you know, they're both relatively well educated. Um, and uh, which is not always the case, right. and uh, it should be interesting to see what those. What, <laughs> what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say about our What are you trying to say? Anyway, it should be interesting to see how those debates come out. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to 2012. I mean, I don't. I guess this, this like I said, this is going to be a major year in my mind as far as politics, election, um, the Mayan calendar, all the crazy stuff that's going on right now. There's so much stuff going on in the world. People are losing their minds. And there's so much abuse going on, so much murder. What's going on this year, man? It just seems crazy. 
you reminded me. I was just thinking. The, um, I was just thinking about Assad and Syria and how that's just getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And just today, uh, Mubarak was sentenced to prison for abusing the uh, protesters, which I, I think myself and a lot of other people did not expect to see happen. What do you think of that? I think that's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he's a lucky man that that's all that's going to happen to him. Mubarak, he, he got what he deserved, you know. And so did Charles Taylor. You know, he was that guy, the African mm -hmm. warlord or, or president or whoever he was, that killed all those people, committed genocide, all that stuff. Yeah. He finally got convicted and got, they gave him 50 years yeah. in prison. Mm -hmm. Hey, you read what you sow. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you have to put good stuff out there. The way you treat people, it comes back. And sometimes it seems to me that it comes back tenfold. You do something crazy to somebody or do something wrong, it always seems to come back, but it seems to come back stronger on you. There's consequences for, for everything, if not immediately, then down the road somewhere, whether it's reaping something good back or reaping something bad back or that chain reaction thing, you know, just, so it does behoove us all to be, be good. Right. Well, at least try to <laughs> be, be good. You yeah. Know? Even if you don't think you're good, just act like it. <laughs> How is that? That's, well, that's, it's your actions that matter, right? Absolutely. Right. Uh, but I was also just thinking recently about um, how a lot of these guys who have just recently prosecuted were heroes when they were young. We were talking about this last night. Right. Um, and Mubarak was a hero when he was young, somewhat. I mean, he was like, finally, he was this, he was like, finally, we have a more reasonable government, you know, several decades ago. The guy from uh, Zimbabwe, I don't remember his name, he's, in the past 20 years, he's been bad, but back in, 19, like, 1980 or something, Stevie Wonder wrote a whole song about him saying how great he was, you know, and because he was, el he was, delivering the, his country from all sorts of crap and became was this great thing, but then what happens is these young men, when they hold power for too many decades, they become corrupt, and you see it over and over again. It's right. an interesting trend. It's like, young man rises to power, big hero, stays there too long, no longer hero. So I think that happens, it's just kind of human nature to some extent, whether mm -hmm. it's power or celebrity, fame, whatever, I mean, you see yes. these people, they go to Hollywood, they make it big, and then, and then they fall, or people who win, get to win the lottery. I mean, right. Power corrupts, but absolute power absolutely corrupts. <laughs> well, look, that's the Bill and Fry show. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> and we have, this was a great conversation. Linda Dishler was our guest today, and she killed it, of course. She, tell, she killed it, and I mean in a good way. You know? <laughs> and um, thank you for watching the show. We'll be back. We'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.